extreme pain, seizures, anxiety, addiction, strokes, brain damage. Can, these can be insult, These can all, can all be solved with an implantable uh, neur, uh, neural link. This is uh, an extremely fundamental thing, and I think a lot of people don't quite understand that. Neuralink is trying to make life easier for you. Remember the time when you're feeling lazy and somebody leaves the door to your room open? Yeah, you remember. And you also remember that nothing could have been more frustrating than that. What if you could just close the door by thinking about it? That's what Neuralink is trying to do. It's yet to release a single product, but it's promising to build the technology to connect up human brains with computers. If it was run by anyone other than Elon Musk, nobody would give it a second look. But with the entrepreneur behind Tesla and Hyperloop at its helm, could Neuralink really deliver a way to merge humans and machines? Neuralink's stated goal is to develop ultra-high bandwidth brain-computer interfaces to connect up humans and machines. The early part of Neuralink's work may advance on restoring lost physical capabilities. The company has suggested the first applications will be aimed at certain types of brain injuries, such as stroke, cancer or congenital problems. While they've given no indication what type of congenital lesions they're thinking of, cerebral palsy might be a likely candidate. In all three, there are often areas of functional brain separated by islands of brain where the neural cabling has died, often due to a lack of blood supply. One of the odd things about human nerves is that they aren't great at recovering after an injury, so that once a connection has been sufficiently severed, it's unlikely to grow back again. This is one of the reasons why transplanting limbs has traditionally been a challenge for medicine. However, if an artificial implant could allow the signal from one functional area of the brain to reach another by leapfrogging the dead area, it could enable people with brain injuries to recover capabilities that have been lost. Building a brain-computer interface that allows you to do many things, rather than one that's used for a single application, could prove difficult, thanks to the limitations of both human and machine hardware. One of the greatest challenges that BCIs face is achieving a bidirectional information flow for multiple applications. Human can talk to a machine and the machine can talk back. Ultimately, Neuralink is thinking much bigger and going far beyond traditional medical technology. Longer term, the company wants to plumb in human intelligence to artificial intelligence, offering upgrades to everyday brains as a way of democratizing smartness. Musk has said before that he believes that AI is one of the greatest threats to humankind and the brain-computer interfaces could be one way of tempering that threat, giving us a chance to keep up and even eventually become part of the super-intelligent AI, which is why a high bandwidth link is needed, to enable our minds to eventually communicate at the same pace as an AI. Musk claimed in late 2018 that Neuralink's first fruits of its work would be better than what anyone thinks is possible. Though it may be worth highlighting, he did make that statement while smoking marijuana on the Joe Rogan radio show. Despite Elon's promise of products on the horizon, there will likely be many, many years of work ahead before you'll be telepathically linked to your computer. One of the major issues that Neuralink will have to tackle is that existing brain-computer interfaces are unidirectional and single application. In the case of artificial ears, information from the outside world is carried to the brain for the task of hearing. In the case of thought control robot, the information goes the other way to enable movement. Enabling bidirectional interfaces would prove challenging for both human and machine. It's very challenging to do from the machine side, and even from the human side. Suppose you want to change a channel on the TV, you would have to imagine yourself changing the channel. And if you want to close your door, you will have to imagine another action within your brain to close the door. Just changing that imagination is very difficult to do quickly, and it's very tiring as well. After 20 minutes, you'll feel very fatigued because you're not used to doing that. To be able to control the universal remote, say, would require humans to undertake a huge shift in thinking. If we would like to control machines with our brains, it's very difficult for a human to do that right now because we're not trained to use our brain in that perspective. We need a lot of training to be able to use that type of technology. Children's neural plasticity, natural creativity and curiosity would mean they'd be likely to adapt to new interfaces easily, but it would be tricky for older people. 
While Musk hasn't been forthcoming about the nature of the different products that Neuralink is working on, he has discussed the need for a type of neural lace. Neural lace could work as a digital layer above the cortex. Just as your cortex works symbiotically with your limbic system, a third digital layer could work symbiotically with the rest of you. Elon suggested that neural lace wouldn't necessarily mean brain surgery and that it could be conveyed to the brain via the body's arteries or veins. There are already drugs that are programmed to travel through the bloodstream but only activate once they've crossed the blood-brain barrier. It's not so far-fetched that suitable small electronics could also only switch on once they reach the brain. For now, however, there are two main schools of thought on how to get the brain part and the computer part of the BCI to talk to each other. Under the invasive approach, the skull is opened up and electrodes are implanted onto the surface of the brain. Under the non-invasive approach, the electrodes sit on the skull and there is no surgery required. Musk may hope for a blood transmitted system, but it appears that Neuralink is looking towards a good old-fashioned invasive approach. Researchers associated with the company published a paper describing a system that would insert flexible polymer pops into the brain using a robotic incision device described as a sewing machine. The system has already been demonstrated on a rat according to the paper and used to record outputs of its brain. However, the brain is a dense piece of matter housing billions of neurons. For a multi-application brain-computer interface to work, the interface would need to potentially access or interpret signals from all of them. Accessing an individual neuron is a problem neuroscientists haven't cracked yet, let alone technology companies. Pleasingly to our egos but problematically for programmers, each of our brain is unique in its electrical signals, meaning a BCI for one individual might not work for another. For each person, we have our own unique brain waves. It's like our own biometrics. It's going to make it very difficult to make a universal machine. One interesting and thorny problem about building brain computer interfaces is that human brain is as much of a mystery as the depth of the oceans. While some parts of it have been well mapped, others are still opaque to science. That doesn't necessarily present as a great problem to brain computer interfaces as it might, however. In fact, brain-computer interfaces are shedding light on the workings of the black box, that is the human brain. But it's not just a question of better understanding of our own wiring. We'll need to get higher powered electronics before BCIs can become commonplace. Ultimately, BCIs will need to be so simple they can be controlled by a computer, iPad or anything like that by an everyday person. That's the issue, basically developing a deep neural network to analyze the data. Now you can do it on a laptop. It's got to have a very good, very fast GPU, but you can do it. But if you want to make a BCI mobile, you will want to make it down to the level of a phone or tablet to do the processing. At the moment, we're not there yet. As computers move forward, I think that problem will be solved as well. In the future, Brain-computer interfaces could ultimately allow the human brain to patch into artificial intelligences and other resources, giving the brain's computing power almost limitless upgrade potential. Would we use it to give ourselves Da Vinci-style intelligence, or just upgrade to be the best Fortnite player the world has ever seen? Hopefully patching our brains into computers will not only bring us artificial intelligence, but artificial wisdom with it.